Good morning, everybody, and welcome today on um, this holiday week. And we're going to have a little program, part one of a three part series on how to have a Florida friendly certified yard. Um, that is actually a program that the University of Florida um, promotes. Um, you can you can watch this series if you are, you know, seriously interested in having me come out and verify that your yard is indeed Florida friendly. Um, or you can watch this series just to satisfy your own mind that, yeah, I think I'm on the right path here. Um, it doesn't do anything fantastic <laughs> for you. You get a certificate and a sign, but it kind of tells your neighbors, hey, you know, I, I, I care about the environment. And I want to do, you know, what's right here in my yard. So let's, we're going to learn a little bit in this part one. Uh, part two and three will be covered by Dr. Lester and I. But part one, we're just going to go over the basics. And what I, this is me, I am Lily Browning. I work for the water department here in Hernando County under water conservation. Um, my program is Florida Friendly Landscaping. And here is my email. Now that is really the best way to catch me. And um, because a lot of times my answer for you might be a little involved. So it's sometimes better to have it in, in writing and, you know, rather than try and remember, but you are welcome to call me as well. Um, during this time of COVID, I am working uh, from a remote location, a lake with a Christmas tree, as you can see. <laughs> Actually, I'm working from home and um, but they brought me my phone. So, you know, you can give me a call and we can talk about these matters as well. So, oh, wait a minute, I have three people in the waiting room. There we go, we'll let you all in. Okay. Let's talk about the process of, you know, what, what happens when you wanna think, hmm, I would like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna let this person um, into, the, into our class, these people into our class. Okay, I'm hitting admit all. Hopefully you'll find your way in. Okay, there we go. Um, so there is a checklist and you can find it. It's disappearing in my screen here, but you can find it online. And this is the process. This is, we're gonna go through this checklist you can find it at, um, I put a link for it on my Facebook page if you wanted to print it out ahead of time and go over it um, while we do this or you can do it after. Um, and it just, I'll, I'll provide you the link in this program as well. And it just explains it to you. And as I said um, in the beginning, sometimes you might wanna do this so you can have a certificate and a sign, um, or you might wanna do it just to satisfy your own mind, like, hey, yeah, I'm on the right track. Um, so you can get your yard all prepared by looking at this list and then call me out and I'll be wearing a mask and all of that. And, you know, we'll go over, we will go over admit, the process with you. So, but when I'm out there, I'm not there, you know, don't get stressed out about me coming out and I'm judging your yard or anything like that. I'm, I am, you know, I have been called the least scary person on earth. So, you know, I'm kind of proud of that title. And um, we're there to, for it to be a positive experience for you and educational. So even if we find out, oh, you're not quite, you haven't, your yard isn't quite there yet, we use that opportunity to educate and to talk and you know how you can get a little further on. I personally think every step you make in this process is a good thing. Even if you there's something you refuse to do that's on the list, all the other steps are always a positive benefit for the environment. So there are two levels um, of Florida friendly landscaping. There's silver and then there's gold. Silver's pretty much easier <laughs> to get than gold. Um, and this is new. Um, 
as I was looking at this list, the University of Florida has added this other um, portion here that it is valid for two years or 24 months. And I know there was a lot of talk when I would see people in the Florida Friendly Landscaping program and when we got together in Gainesville or other places, we would all be saying, there's no time limits. You certify a yard and someone else moves in and 10 years go by, that sign could still be up in the yard, looks nothing you know, like a Florida Friendly Certified Yard. So they eventually, um, you know, repaired that process, I guess, and put a 24 hour, um, 24 hour, well, that would be a very short certified yard, 24 month um, limit on it. So, Kathy, if you want to talk to the other master gardeners who believe um, that they, you know, um, have a Florida friendly certified yard, if it's been more than two years, they may wish to become recertified or anybody else who has done the process. Okay, okay we're gonna go over the nine principles, just so you get an idea of where we're headed with this. And that is why we broke this up into three parts because there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of nuances to it. And um, Dr. Lester and I didn't want to overload you all at once, especially so close to the holidays. So I'm just going to go over basically the nine principles and the first three pages of this list and how one starts to be qualified. So of course the number one principle of Florida friendly landscaping is right plant, right place. That's where it all starts. So you can even have 100% native, 100% Florida friendly, but if they're not put in the right environment, they're not gonna thrive. Um, so if you put the right plant in the right place, it's going to have a greater resistance to the problems that could come along. You know, just, you know, what we're doing right now, we're kind of um, staying home in our right place <laughs> to build up any kind of, you know, um, so we don't get out there and get sick with other things and therefore weaken ourselves if, you um, you know, if we happen to come across COVID or something like that. Plants are the same way. When they're in the right environment, they're gonna be stronger overall. It can be a native plant, but if you put it in the wrong place, it's still not gonna be happy. You still have to consider the site conditions. Number two is watering efficiently. And this is probably one of the most abused ones out there. Um, somebody's lawn starts looking bad, what is the first thing they want to do to it? Well, I'll water it more. And that is usually not the answer. So watering efficiently, what we're covering here and why Florida Friendly Landscaping is concerned with watering efficiently is if you water too much, you're going to cause a leaching of any kind of fertilizer or chemicals you put on your lawn to get into our aquifer, or it could run off and get into our open waterways. So let me admit Sherry here, okay. So, but there's other reasons why we should water efficiently. Number one, we can damage the um, health of our lawns and our landscapes by overwatering them. I have whole other classes on that, but usually your landscape plants that are in your beds, your shrubs, your trees, your other landscape plants, they don't need anywhere near the amount of water that your lawn does. So it is, you know, it's better to cap them off from the irrigation system if you even use one. And down below, I just so you know, put Hernando County um, watering days because people seem to be forgetting that. We're on one day a week watering. It's really all um, your lawn needs. Um, your lawn needs half an inch to three quarters of an inch of water. Your St. Augustine Floritan lawn does. Your Bahia grass can live on natural rainfall. Um, but it needs three, half an inch to three quarters of an inch per watering event. This time of year, that does not even need to be once a week. You can skip a week and be perfectly fine. And you may have noticed your lawn is uh, golden because of all the different uh, 
frosts and freezes we have had, it's perfectly fine. It's winter, you know, nothing you can do is gonna force it back green again. What's going to make it green again is longer days, warmer days, just nature. So it's okay to have a golden lawn this time of year. Notice I didn't say it was a brown lawn. We're, we're just kind of changing people's attitude a little bit at a time. It's winter, so it's golden time here. Fertilizing appropriately. If you choose to fertilize, um, well, there, this could be a class <laughs> over an hour long unto itself. So let's just say fertilizing appropriately is one of the principles so that there's not too much that your grass is incapable of taking up and um, that it, when runoff comes along because of rain or you're not watering efficiently, that takes all that fertilizer down the street to the nearest open waterway or it leaches through the ground into our aquifer. Then we have a problem with our uh, waterways and our groundwater having too many nitrates, too much uh, nitrogen in it. So we want to fertilize appropriately. That means at the right time of the year. And that means following the label. And it also means following any kind of county ordinances as well. We are just a few days away from being in a blackout period. Uh, January 1st through March 31st, homeowners are not allowed to fertilize their lawns in Hernando County. Um, that doesn't mean run out and do it now. Why are you going to go out and you know, fertilize your frosted lawn? It's not, doesn't have the ability, it has sloughed off most of its roof, roots for the winter, would not have the ability to take it up. Now's not the time to fertilize and we don't want to encourage new growth. Mulch is another one of our principles. We love mulch. Um, it, has, it does a lot of good. I always say mulch hides a multitude of sins. It makes a yard look really nice um, when, when it is well cared for and you know it is um, renewed from time to time. Because sure, weeds can grow on mulch just like they can grow on anything. If weed seeds blow there, um, you know, they can start growing on top of the mulch. But what we want mulch to do is to help retain that soil moisture, but also as it's supposed to break down and decompose. That's what we want it to do. That's why we want you to use something that um, was once alive. So it can help improve the nutrient holding capacity and the water holding capacity of our sandy soils. And it just looks nice and it's a great way of recycling as well. Number five is probably my favorite of the principles, attract wildlife. And there are many, many ways you can do that. And the reason we wanna do that is so that, because we've all moved to Florida, um, there's probably not a whole lot of natives here. I mean, my husband is one, he's a fifth generation native, so I know they exist. So that makes my children sixth generation natives who still won't accept me as a native, even though I've been here 42 years. Even my children who I made, you know, created them to be natives here. They don't, they don't accept uh, any kind of non-natives, but a lot of us, everyone who has ever built a house anywhere for our own habitat, we displaced some wildlife, no matter where you are, who you are, that has happened. So what we're trying to do is mitigate those circumstances and, and provide a little bit back to the wildlife we have displaced. I live here in the Royal Highlands. Um, I'm watching houses pop up all over the place. I just finished one on my street and there's another signboard on another empty lot. And I've seen what they do. They come in and they just clear cut everything. And it seems like what we do when we clear cut everything and then start again, we put everything unnatural to that area back down. <laughs> you know, we put down uh, turf and then maybe some palms that aren't from this area. 
shrubs that don't actually belong here. And then we wonder why doesn't the wildlife come to my yard? So if we plant the appropriate plants and we use little to no chemicals, the wildlife is eventually gonna come back. And if more and more of us do that, we're gonna provide that green corridor for them, you know, to give something back to them. Number seven is recycling. There are many ways that we can recycle in the yard. Um, this is my compost bin. That's why it's so dirty. Sorry, it's in use. And um, composting is one way to do that. Um, mulch, of course, is a form of recycling. Uh, rain barrels, rain gardens, all these wonderful ways with which you can recycle in your yard. And reduced storm, storm water runoff is number eight. We've all seen this, these creeks going down the street. And a Florida friendly yard does whatever it can to hoard that water that comes in its yard, to not allow any of it or as little of it as possible to actually leave the yard and become storm water runoff, which is pollutants favorite express train to our nearest waterway. So uh, Florida Friendly Yard is going to make use of rain barrels, rain gardens possibly, um, uh, as many pervious surfaces as possible so that we don't have a whole lot of cement and asphalt and things like that that are gonna slough the water away as much as can allow the water to filter in. And that also will you know, stop the chemicals from leaving our yard and going down the street. And you may say, there are, I have a chemical free yard. That's fantastic. Pretty much so do I, but the rainwater we let leave is gonna pick up pollution somewhere along the way. And you do not have a chemical free roof, most likely. So, you know, think about that as well. We want the rainwater off of our roof to soak down, filter out impurities and not just go down the street and end up in our waterways or in our oceans. And number nine is protect the waterfront. All these things work together to help protect our fragile waterfront. And I put this aerial picture here because whenever I'm on an airplane uh, leaving Tampa or coming into Tampa, I'm not even talking about the bay what do you see when you look down on the, on the other side of the plane away from the bay? Still water, 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 more water. Everywhere in Florida, there's just water. So even if you don't live on the waterway, I bet any one of us could walk for seven minutes and find some little waterway. And in fact, all of us live on the water because we are all standing on top of the aquifer. So every one of us live on the water and it's our job to protect our water sources and the environment in general. So let's start with this list. The very first thing, one of the very first things on this list, how one goes about having a certified Florida friendly yard. I sometimes ask people, are you, is your yard certifiable? Um, we're gonna find out. First thing you need to know is you gotta have plants. <laughs> I'm sorry, but an all rock yard, even an all mulch yard is not gonna qualify as uh, Florida friendly. And this one, okay, it has a few plants, um, but you need, we're gonna get into the numbers of plants that you need. So landscapes made up entirely of rock, shell, or other uh, materials like that are not eligible for recognition. I know you find you may find that that's the easy thing to do, and you know it's less work, and you're not using as many chemicals, but it's also not really giving anything back to the environment. On the other end of the scale, this is also not considered Florida friendly. Unkempt is not Florida friendly. Now, this may be the most nature friendly yard in your neighborhood in actuality. It might be attracting a ton of pollinators and um, wildlife, 
slithering wildlife to <laughs> birds. Um, it might be actually quite good for the environment, but it is not what we want to promote in a Florida friendly landscape. So I would say a Florida friendly landscape is somewhere in between this and this, and we'll go over those details. So I mentioned there were two levels. The first level is silver. So I want you to pay very close attention to that very, 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 very first rule. To be certified as Florida friendly, the, you have to certify that your landscape complies with codes, laws, and HOA rules if you're in them, in one. This may be very frustrating for a lot of people because maybe you're thinking a Florida friendly yard is going to get me out of having to follow the HOA rules. And you're going to ask, isn't there a law? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a law. It was passed in um, 2009. It's uh, Florida Senate Bill 2080. And in it, it uh, if you want to look it up, you can Senate Bill 2080. I believe it's 467 something, 0.3, somewhere around there is where it uh, gets into the details. Except there's not a lot of details and that's kind of what the issue is, it states that HOAs are not allowed to prevent Florida friendly landscapes, but there's nothing out there completely defining. You know, there's following those nine principles, but there's just a lot of room um, for vagueness. And we all know what lawyers can do with vagueness. So if you really wanna push it and the HOA really wants to push it, you know, sometimes it gets into litigation and it's about a 50-50 chance that you may win against the HOA. Um, and there is nothing in Senate Bill 2080 or even in any Florida friendly landscaping um, statements that just categorically say St. Augustine, Florida Tam grass is not Florida friendly. There's nothing that says that. Now, why is that? Let's go, let's go back to principle number one, right plant, right place. So Floritam grass can be the right plant in the right place. And therefore we don't wanna rule out. I mean, it can grow great in some locations with little to no uh, chemical input. If you are caring for it properly and mowing it high, and we're gonna discuss that, and it's in the uh, right location. <laughs> So that is why they don't categorically say, you know, St. Augustine Floritam is out. Now, I'm not saying that your community does not have a problem. You know, it very well may have a problem with St. Augustine grass, but to get just general Florida friendly landscaping to say St. Augustine is bad, you know, they're not really gonna do that. Now, if you can prove that you are putting way too much input and, and money and it's just failing, that will be something you know, you'd have to take up with, with your HOA. So just to say, you know, I just putting it out there that there are ways and I have classes on it in which you can have a Florida friendly yard and still please your HOA. You can look back on some of my videos and they might be on Hernando County's government YouTube. Um, as well, which talks about how you can still be Florida friendly, get what you want and communicate with them. What are they looking for? What do they want? You know, we're getting a little bit of psychology in those classes and how to make the two kind of come together, but to be certified. So you can't have any plants on the UF IFAS, that's University of Florida, Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences assessment prohibited list. All you have to do is Google UF assessment, UF IFAS assessment prohibited list. So that's a list of um, invasive exotic plants that for silver um, certification, you can't have any of these plants in your yard. Now, I, I understand some of these plants are impossible to get rid of. 
most specifically skunk, skunk vine is on that list. And I know very few people who have zero skunk vine in their yard in Hernando County. So don't let that frustrate you because I'm gonna come out and realize you're not purposefully growing this skunk vine. And if you are doing everything you can to keep it under control, you know, I'm still going to, uh, you know, not hold that terribly against you. But there are plants out there that, you know, um, years and years ago, master gardeners who have passed on now, they refused to get rid of a Chinese tallow tree. You know, they were just, they loved that tree and they made a purposeful, you know, decision. No, I will not get rid of that tree. It brings my fall color. <laughs> um, so they couldn't be certified as Florida friendly. And, you know, they and the um, coordinator at the time just left it at that and left on good terms. So, you know, we're not going to certify you if you are out there purposefully loving <laughs> and growing um, plants on this list. But we're going to also try to be reasonable if it's a weed that you're really trying to keep under control. And if most of your plants are put in right plant, right place, if they're put in locations where they get the right amount of light, where they're in the right kind of soil, where they um, are grouped together with other plants with similar water needs. That's another one for silver certification, but you must have 10 unique plant species for silver. That means 10 totally different kinds of species. And I bet all of us can easily exceed that list. Now, if your house was just built and you only have what the contractor put in there, uh, probably not. <laughs> so that might be something you know, you need to put on your list to work on. Diversity is always the key. It's the key to healthy anything. It's a key to a healthy human. It's a key to a healthy animal. It's key to a healthy landscape as well, diversity. So that's why we want 10, at least 10 different um, unique plant species. Also, when it comes to fertilizing. Now, let me tell you about these these rules, um, how you get checked off for fertilizing or watering, which I don't do. So how would that work for me? <laughs> um, you get the points for it. If you, if you don't fertilize, if you don't have an irrigation system, you're going to get the, the good points for it. So that's how that'll work. But if you do, um, at least 25% of your uh, Landscape must contain plant beds. And that is probably pretty easy because I would say most HOAs, most deed restricted communities require 75% turf. It would be fantastic if you have um, more beds than that and less turf. But uh, to be silver, you have to um, have at least 25% plant beds. Also, if you happen to spill any fertilizer, it is disposed of properly. That means it's swept up and put back in the lawn, back in the bag, um, but it is not hosed down your driveway. You don't use fertilizer within 24 hours of a predicted heavy rainfall. Also, if it is used, if it is not used, you automatically get these points, but if it is used, you follow the University of Florida's recommendations. Now I'm going to put a caveat to that because the University of Florida, you know, tells you you can start um, uh, fertilizing on March 15th. Now remember our ordinance does not allow you to uh, fertilize until April 1st. That two weeks is not going to hurt your lawn. It's going to be fine for your lawn. Um, so what I would add to it is that you also follow county ordinances regarding any of these with watering or fertilizing. Mulch, when we're talking about mulch, this on the bottom left, you don't do that. We call that volcano mulching, even though that's pine needles, it's gonna break down pretty quickly, but that is not a good practice, not at all good for the tree. Um, there's a uh, campaign going out there that uh, Whitney from Pasco County, um, Dr. Elmore, the County Extension Director, she has started a campaign. It's called hashtag free the flare. 
So anytime you see, you know, on the bottom of a tree, there's a little flared out part. We want to see that. So free the flare. And up here, uh, Jim Mall, also from Pasco County now, um, he is pulling away that mulch from that tree. You want uh, the mulch not to be touching the trunks of the trees or even the stems of flowers if that's possible. And we only want two to three inches. So no volcano mulching, just a two to three inch layer pulled away from the trunks of trees. And I have here cypress mulch is not used. And you may be wondering, well, why not? <laughs> That's the cheapest thing in the store. It is not harmful to a landscape, but it doesn't belong in a Florida friendly landscape because it's not a sustainable ethical practice. What they do to obtain it is not sustainable or ethical. It's not you know, taken from plantations. Um, it's taken from young trees. They go into the wetlands and take down young trees because there's no old hardwood cypress trees left. Take down these young trees and immediately shred them down to sell to us as mulch. It's, it's uh, not a, usually not a product of, you know, byproduct of the lumber industry. Having said that, there's a, a um, you know, there's always something out there. If you go toward, if you go down 50 and head east and go to Terrytown um, on the other side of 301, there is a um, lumber yard there where you can find cy cypress mulch. That is the product of, uh, you know, the lumber industry. So that would be one of those, you know, asterisks is there if you can prove you got it from somewhere like that. But just going into a big box store and buying bags of it um, would not, should not be used in a Florida friendly yard. So many other types of mulch can be. Pine straw is fantastic. Natural leaves that you already have in your yard. Um, pine nuggets. Um, even, you know, those weird colored dyed ones. <laughs> um, it's some kind of mixed hardwood and as, as, you know, as long as the bag says the dye is a non-toxic soy-based or something like that type of dye, that will be fine as well. I prefer the big um, pine nuggets. I think they look nice, but they also take a long time to break down. So you get more use out of them. Pesticides are used. The problem areas and only the problem areas are spot treated, right? Where the problem is with the right product, I should say for the right problem. The only type of pesticides I use at all in my yard are um, fire ant bait, right where the fire um, ant mounds are. I always say I play fire ant chess with my neighbor. <laughs> okay, your move, I put them in his yard, his move, he sends them back to mine. Um, but that is the only kind I use. But if you do use any, if you have someone who comes out and broadcast sprays all over the entire yard, just to pesticide, just to kill everything that's there, then you, you would not have a Florida friendly yard. If you do live on the waterfront, directly on a waterfront, these rules are for you. You have to have 10 feet that's, that's so minimal. Really, you know, 20 to 25 feet would be better. But for these rules, 10 feet of um, no grass clippings. So, uh, or pesticides or fertilizer or irrigation water. So it would be easiest to grow something there that you don't have to mow. Um, or, and that doesn't need any of these doesn't need uh, anything but natural rainfall and doesn't need the pesticides and the fertilizers. So most likely native bunch grasses, something like that along that area to protect that waterfront. Okay, and uh, your downspouts for a silver um, certification, at least most of them, uh, drain into landscape areas or pervious surfaces. 
meaning the, they are not directed to go down your driveway and into the street. Wherever the water goes, it's able to um, soak into the soil. That, that's basically how that works. And in your irrigation, if you don't have an irrigation system and you don't uh, add the supplemental water, you automatically get these points. Um, if you do, you only apply that half inch to three quarters of an inch. And um, I can explain to you how you would figure that out. I talk about it in a lot of classes. Um, and you have, and I see I have that all capital, a functioning rain sensor. Because so many rain sensors were put on when the house was built. And UF did some studies where they put a whole bunch out on a field on poles. And um, I don't remember which brands it was, but the ones that lasted the longest lasted about three years. So if your rain sensor is older than that, which it probably is, you might want to check it out. Um, you know, run the hose over it and see if it's still working. It should not allow uh, your system to come on when the corks inside are all wet like that. Um, if it's turned sideways, <laughs> it's not going to work. If it's upside down, it's not going to work. If a tree limb has grown over it, it's probably not going to work. Um, or if somebody put it under an eave, it's absolutely not going to work. So just check out what your rain sensor is doing and make sure it's functioning properly. And we actually, if you're a customer of Hernando County Utilities um, and you get a new rain sensor using uh, the uh, irrigation contractors that are on our list, not just doing it yourself, DIYs don't count. Um, but if you use one of our participating contractors, there's a rebate, a $50 rebate, if you get a new uh, rain sensor. And you can call me or email me and I'll send you that information. If you're a customer of Hernando County Utilities, it's a credit on your water bill. That's how that works. And let's see, I got, I, what you can't see is I have boxes <laughs> in the way of some of these. Some of the words here, we're talking about turf. I kind of alluded before that turf, uh, St. Augustine has to be mowed high. And by that, I mean three and a half to four inches. That's UF's recommended height. This is the beginning and the end. <laughs> this is the keystone point of the health of your lawn. It just really is. So if it is mowed too low, lower than three and a half to four inches, that is where you're going to invite in fungal issues. We have a big fungus problem in Hernando County called take all root rot. It starts by mowing too low, starts by watering too much. It's in the soil, but stressing the lawn uh, by overwatering and mowing too low makes the lawn more susceptible to this fungus that's already in the soil, and also if you over fertilize. Um, do you have a Florida friendly certified yard? Weed and feed is not used. This is as shocking to some people as the cypress mulch issue. Why not? Why is weed and feed not used? First of all, that is um, a chemical that you're spreading all over your entire lawn. Um, which is okay with fertilizer if you do it correctly. But these two um, events should be happening at two different times. If you're trying to catch some of our spring weeds, you're going to need to do that beginning of February, somewhere around there with a pre-emergent. And that is not a time when you're allowed by our ordinance, nor should you yet be fertilizing. Also, weed and feed, um, I've heard, I've seen lawns die that were treated with weed and feed. Um, one in a community here, um, Jim Davis, the county extension director here, knows of a gentleman who killed his lawn with weed and feed in one of our deed restricted communities. And it said on the bag, 
uh, for St. Augustine. Didn't even just say for Southern lawns, it said for St. Augustine. And he put it down and he killed his lawn and then looked and un teeniest, tiniest little fine print, it said, not Floritan. There's about a dozen different varieties of St. Augustine, but the most common in Central Florida is going to be Floritan, and it said not Floritan. Um, there's been other issues uh, with non-target kills, like say this picture we're looking at here, if you put down weed and feed and suddenly wonder why those palms are dying. Sometimes um, it has traveled and you know killed non-target kills. So it's just not a recommend a recommendation that we um, that we are in favor of. And grass clippings are left on the lawn after mowing, except in that 10-foot area around a waterway. But the rest of your lawn. That's not gonna cause thatch. It's gonna actually provide more nitrogen for your lawn, enough so where you can skip a fertilization every year. So if you go by UF recommendations and they say uh, anywhere from two to four, you can skip one of those just by uh, not picking up those grass clippings. If you do, if you do compost them, don't put them out for the trash. That just doesn't really even make any sense. And aesthetics. This kind of goes back to that Florida friendly still has to look good. That's the, the best way I can put it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there in the waiting room. Okay. Um, plants are not overgrown. In order to uh, reach silver, you have to um, qualify with four of these five aesthetics. Plants are not overgrown. Plants do not show signs of decline. Appropriate pruning practices are utilized. And I'm gonna have a class coming up on proper pruning pretty soon. Um, that means <laughs> how I would interpret that is uh, not severely pruning your crepe myrtles. And I have whole demonstrations and things about that as well. And you're gonna see that happening all over the place very soon. And that is not the proper practice for a crepe myrtle. But plants do not require pruning more than two times a year. That doesn't mean, in certain situations, it's okay to like prune all the way almost to the ground. But when we're talking about trees or things like that, you don't want to prune them more than two times a year and you want to use the appropriate practices. And there are defined and maintained beds. Um, you can tell the difference between a walkway, a turf area and where the bed is. And they are routinely weeded and the mulch kept up. And landscape and household debris are properly disposed of or recycled and not visible from front yards. So and one of the things with Florida friendly landscaping is we do encourage snags, which are old trees, if you have the room to have one, or even brush piles. But we you know, kind of put those out of sight. They encourage a lot of wildlife, but it's probably not the best of things to have in your front yard. And also, you know, when you prune, don't let it just drop in the, in the yard there. Um, it's got to be neat looking. It's got to be nice looking. It's got to look like a human has something to do with the yard. Now gold, that was everything that you need for silver. What about gold? Gold entails everything I just told you about silver plus these other aspects or added to it. Um, silver was no plants on the UF IFAS assessment um, prohibited. Silver, they have a whole other list, the UF IFAS assessment invasive, not recommended. So not only the prohibited list, but the not recommended list. That gets into a whole lot more plants. And you can Google UF IFAS, um, assessment. 
and look at those lists. Some of the things on there might shock you actually. You of those aesthetics that I just talked about, you have to meet all of them, not just four of them, but five of them. If you have irrigation, not more than five, you know, 5%, that would be nice. Not more than 50% of the irrigation system is high volume. So that would be for your open turf areas. But for the bedding areas, you either have no irrigation, which you would get these points for, or low flow. That means drip irrigation, um, micro irrigation, things like that. Instead of 10 unique plant species, you need 15. I would, you know, I'd wager that probably most of you have a lot more than that. So, you know, if you're having me come out there, you're a plant lover, most likely. So you're going to have more than that. That runoff that I talked about, everything that comes off your roof must go into a pervious surface or a rain barrel, rain garden, something like that. And if you have an irrigation system, you do not have spray heads and rotor heads in the same zone. Those are in separate zones. Again, if you don't have an irrigation system, you automatically get those points. So that is basically, um, you know, the list that you need to start with. But I want to go over here. You know, what what is what is Florida friendly? It is uh, a program of the University of Florida and the um, Extension Service. Even though here in Hernando County. It is um, funded, I am funded by the utilities department. I work for the water department. I am a Hernando County employee. I have been for 21 years, although in this capacity for about six, six and a half, somewhere around there. So, but when we discuss Florida friendly landscaping, you know how things are and people are, they're gonna grab a hold of a name that has a brand and they're going to try and trick you into thinking because they use the words Florida friendly landscaping that they are. Some plants I've seen that way that would certainly, you know, they have Florida friendly landscaping written on them and they would certainly be on the, one of those IFAS assessment lists as not recommended or prohibited. Also, you go online and, you know, maybe some businesses have called themselves that. What you need to be careful of. Florida Friendly has a dash in the middle, has a trademark sign after landscaping. But most important is it's an educational program. I'm never going to sell you anything. You reimburse the county if you happen to get a rain barrel. You pay us back what we paid for it. But I, you know, I'm not a business. I'm not going to sell you anything. Nobody from the extension office is a business or going to sell you anything. The universe, it's a University of Florida educational program. So just be careful when you see people trying to utilize that term. So who do you trust? Where do you go when you're trying to figure these things out when you see the name Florida Friendly? If it's from the University of Florida, you know, they created the program, you can certainly trust them. And, and your extension office, anybody there, Dr. Lester, Teresa, any master gardener, they're going to give you the appropriate information. Our water management district, the Southwest Florida Water Management District, has had a lot to do with the funding and the promotion of Florida friendly landscaping. So go to any of their sites, which I'm going to show you in a minute, one of their websites, they're going to give you appropriate information. Of course, um, county utility departments are at least here with me and in Citrus County because both of the Florida Friendly Landscaping Coordinators in those counties, we work for the water department. So you can call there and you know eventually get a hold of me. Just remember we don't sell plants, nor do we recommend where to purchase plants or what, um, what businesses to use. We teach you about the program so you can use your discretion in making those decisions. So if you are ready to learn more about this, if this is exciting you, um, we're going to continue on how to go about this. On January 12th and 19th, we're going to cover more in depth 
these nine principles. Dr. Lester from the Extension Office is going to join me. He's going to cover things like that, um, uh, the pest control, you know, proper pest control, also uh, water efficiently. And um, I'm going to make him do the hard ones. That's what I <laughs> No, not really. And um, we're going to cover them and see if you qualify or how you can go about qualifying. Now, um, I have a few of these signs like this gentleman has beside him. I can get you a certificate anytime once I determine that you do qualify. I have a few of these signs and I've been talking to the University of Florida about getting more. So, it, you know, it'll be into the new year. I don't know if they'll send me some or I'll have to drive up to Gainesville to get some, but um, I'll get more available. So, um, you know, if this is of interest to you, probably after the 19th, we can start uh, coming out and seeing if your yard does indeed qualify so that it just tells your neighbors, hey, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned about the environment. I wanna have a beautiful yard that is also uh, very environmentally friendly. What it does not do is get the HOA off your back if you are not following their rules, but we can also help you, you know, find that happy medium um, between what you want to do and what they're kind of expecting. Let's see here. Here again is my email. If you'd like to email at me, and I'll look at the chat in a in a second here. Um, it's Lily B with two L's in the middle at HernandoCounty.us. I also have this Facebook page, which is probably where most of you found me. If you have friends who don't do Facebook, this is going to be recorded. It might not be till next week at this point, but it'll be recorded and put on Hernando County government's YouTube channel. You go there, I have uh, probably about a dozen classes that have been put on there. So if you know people who won't do Facebook, but they like YouTube, send them there to watch these programs. The next class I'm going to do is next week. It'll be next Wednesday. I normally do Wednesday classes, but not today because I didn't think I would get your attention tomorrow. <laughs> so um, the next class I'm going to do will be December 30th. That's 21 landscape goals for 2021. Um, that should be a pretty fun one. And then, like I said, on those dates in January, the 12th and the 19th, we're going to continue with parts two and three of this particular program. Here's some uh, resources for you. Uh, where I got this checklist is on that ffl.ifis.ufl.edu. What you can do is email me um, and say, I'd like a PDF of today's program. So you have this in writing and I'll be glad to send that to you. Watermatters.org, that is the Southwest Florida Water Management District's webpage. They got a lot of great things about Florida friendly landscaping on there. They even have like an interactive yard and a lot of good things to go there. Also, floridayards.org is another University of Florida site. Where you can learn all that there is to learn <laughs> about Florida Friendly Landscaping. And there's this book, Florida Friendly Guide to Plant Selection and Landscape Design. Um, there are many ways to get a hold of that book. You can Google that and download it in a PDF version. You can go back up to watermatters.org, go under resources for um, homeowners. They will, if you live in one of their 17 districts, they will mail you a free copy of that book. Another way is you can go by the county extension office. Um, give them a call at 352-754-4433. Say you want one of those books and um, Teresa will tell you, come on by and she can even go out to your car to give it to you. One other way is the Hernando County Master Gardeners have a nursery at 19490 Oliver Street 
in Brooksville. That's Oliver, not Olive. Those are two different streets in Brooksville. Um, and they are open Wednesdays and Saturdays from 8 to 11. They will not be open tomorrow or Saturday. They're taking the holiday week off. But after that, they will be open. They also have free copies of this book. So there are many ways to get a hold of that. And it's the plant guide is fantastic in it, as well as gives you some design ideas, goes over the principles. It's just a great book to really, to really have. So I'm going to wish you happy holidays before I look at the chat. And um, I just realized before this started, on Christmas night, it's going to get cold, <laughs> like really cold, like 29 degrees. So if you go back to my Facebook page or if you go to Hernando County Government YouTube, I have a program there called Winter is Coming. It's actually pinned to the top of my Facebook page. It's going to give you guidelines in what to do um, when we have freezing weather. Probably if you're like me, a lot of things have already, you know, frozen. I'm not concerned that they're not going to come back. If that's what's worrying you, you know, it's, it's the right plan in the right place, especially if it's a native or something like that. We never got cold enough to kill the roots. So I think it's, it's going to be fine. Your potted plants, you might want to make sure and bring in the garage up and grouped up against the house together because those potted plants are a lot more susceptible because they're not in the ground keeping um, the roots protected. But go to that, um, definitely go to and watch that if you're worried about what to do during our cold weather. Okay, let me look at some of these chat questions. I really have no idea if the rain sensor rebate is available in other counties. You would have to contact um, your, your county utility or your city utility. Um, and, and you know, ask them and find out. Andrea wants to know if we can get a copy. Certainly, um, please email me at that Lily B at Hernando County US and say I'd like a copy, and I'll send you a PDF of it. Um, yes, thank you, Bob, for answering that. Um, yeah, it's much easier to send the PDF file. It's a lot smaller, and nobody can change it <laughs> and things like that. Um, it is best uh, to email me for it because then I'll have your email and um, I may not see this chat again. Uh, so Eric says, my HOA doesn't allow us to plant anything in the 10 feet in front of our lake. So I can only have Floritan, which I have to mow. Um, would that disqualify me from getting a Florida friendly certification? Um, I'll have to talk to you more about that, <laughs> Eric. Um, you know, it sounds like more of a conversation which we need to have. So if you want to email me, um, send me pictures, I need to know where it's at, you know, where you're at and all of that, and we can we can discuss it further. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Susan, for uh, wishing you happy holidays and Okay, Andrea has a naked yard and she wants to do these things. Um, certainly you can email me uh, for suggestions. Certainly I'll, I'll, I will be glad to try and answer you and guide you. Okay. I think um, that is pretty much all of the chats. So thank you everybody. And again, have a very happy holiday if you are concerned about that oh chilly night that we're gonna have on Christmas night, go to my Facebook page or Hernando County YouTube and watch that winter is coming. Uh, thank you very much and everyone have a good week and enjoy your holidays. Please stay safe, <laughs> you know, do what you need to do um, to stay safe. And goodbye, thank you everybody.